Side besides Virginia. Okay, I'm just checking. Just making sure everybody's awake. I know there's a little storm that rolled through, but so we're gonna talk a little bit about how we complicate things. Does anybody in here ever complicate things? We overthink and you know we do that a lot with tithing. We overcomplicate it and we come up with reasons why we shouldn't do this and we shouldn't shouldn't give here and we shouldn't help somebody out or is it, do, can I just really just use this to 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 pay this bill and is you know does God really need this and uh is he really going to help me out if I tithe and we just we we really overcomplicate things instead of just reading the word and see you know what that's what it says that's what I'm going to do Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says this and the Lord he is the one who goes before you he will be with you he will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. All you got to do is remember that. Do not fear. He, he's already ahead of you. He already knows what's going to happen. He's already taken care of you. Just trust him. Guys, y'all go ahead and serve the congregation. So tonight I just want to give you a couple of encouraging quotes. Uh, maybe one of these is for you. Maybe all of them are for you. So um, just, uh, just listen to these quotes and just really think about them and see see what you know how this this quote could possibly help you always here's the first one always remember 
that your present situation is not your final destination. The best is yet to come. Man, if you could just remember that the best is yet to come. All right, the second one is sometimes the bad things that happen in our lives put us directly on the path to the best things that will ever happen to us. Bad things happen for a reason. They put us in line for what God's really got for us. The third one is, if you don't like where you are, move. You are not a tree. You ever seen a tree get up and walk away? No. We're not trees, though. We have the opportunity to move. All right. You can't start the next chapter if you're rereading the last. Man, close that book and throw it away. Get rid of it. The next one is, if the door doesn't open, it's not your door. If it won't open, don't go through that thing. You don't, want, you don't want to go down that door. God's got a better door for you. The next one is sometimes you need to step outside, get some air, and remind yourself of who you are and what you want to be. The next one's a pretty simple one. Sometimes you just need to go talk to a three-year-old to, re to realize what life really is. Because they will tell you, right? They're honest. And All right, the, the next one is listen and silent are spelled with the same letters. So think about it. It's not always about us. Maybe it's about being there for someone else. And then sometimes you have to stop thinking so much and go where your heart leads you. And that's what tithing's all about. That's what, that's what Jesus set that up for, right where your heart is. So you don't have to have it all figured out. That's the last one. You do not have to have it all figured out. I've heard pastors say things about pieces. Pastor Jason talked about pieces on Wednesday night. And sometimes you just don't have all the pieces, so you don't always have it figured out. But what we do have is faith and trust in God. And that's what tithing's all about, is having faith and trust in God with what's going to happen. Just give him, give him what he's asking for. Just give him that 10%. That and that will lead your heart to completely be in, engulfed in him. It's that simple. We make it so, we overcomplicate things so many times when it's really, really simple. Just just, just have a heart that's after God, and, and that'll all come together. Guys, y'all go ahead and come up here. If everybody can stand and point your hands this way, we'll bless this offering. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do for us, Lord. And help us, Father God, to not overcomplicate things, Lord. Help us to just lead be led by your direction, Lord, and, and help to, to lead others, dear God. Help people see us, Lord, and help them, Father God, just follow along with, with what we're doing because we're being led by you, Lord. Help us to be the example that you've called us to be, God. And we ask, Lord, tonight that you would be with our praise team, Lord, that you would usher in your presence through them, Lord, that you will just let every song that they sing, Father God, just come to, right to our hearts, Lord, and, and help it to help us praise you and worship you the way we need to, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would be with Stacy tonight as he brings us the word, God, that you would let every word that he says, God, come straight from your throne room, Lord, and help us to, Father God, to take it home with us, God, and to use it out in your kingdom to help build it up, Lord. We love you and praise you for all you do in your name. Amen. All right, a couple of uh, quick announcements, same ones as this morning. VBS donations are needed. For, they need paper towel holders, and they need empty water bottles. And don't forget, if you're a VBS um, helper, there's a meeting Wednesday, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the Sam's room. And as always, on Thursdays at 10 a.m. in the morning, there's prayer meeting here at the church. Uh, so don't forget about that. Everybody's welcome if you have the opportunity to come. So you guys can show some love now.
Good evening. <clears throat> if we get the adults to sit down and get our kids on up here. Yeah, I need some kids. This has been a great week, hasn't it? Brent and Heather got married. Fourth of July. The Bible says, those who the sun set free is free indeed. Are you free tonight? Great. This is the night we do our Sunday children's church. And if you're uh, visiting or something you don't know, they're going to play a song. The kids are going to come around and collect, hold up your hands, whatever you got. Tens, twenties, hundreds change pennies we'll take it all hey good to see you and um this money goes to the kids in peru they're still not able to go to the feeding place so they're still bringing food to the children and the families so actually i think our money's going a lot further than just the children right now so they're going to start the music and go ahead and get a get get whatever you can whatever god lays on your heart you know we want to thank you already for what you're going to do we praise you for everything. Go ahead. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. A hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a man. 
have um, some children in our prayer over this. You know, as, as I look and see what's coming up here, and it's just an excitement that's happening in this house, I'll tell you what. We don't have a lot of people here, Pastor, but I believe the ones that aren't here, people here are making up for it. And you're going to be so blessed for that your whole life. You don't know whose life you're touching when you're doing this. And, I, you know, I, I think about that song, I Can Only Imagine, walking to heaven one day and having little kids like this coming up and saying, thank you, thank you for what you've given. So um, who's going to start praying? Landon? Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you for the love, the mercy, and the grace. And I ask you, and bless your children, and Blue, and bless your family, and your precious name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord Jesus. Please let us continue having a good service, Lord. And uh, please let more money go to uh, Peru, Lord Jesus, and touch uh, the kids in Peru, and touch the coronavirus, Lord. In the name of your word, Lord, amen. amen. Are you guys ready to worship? Yeah. Get up on your feet. You're free. You got freedom in this house.
about you guys but there's been a few times in my past in my life that I remember being in places and just knowing that I was not supposed to be there knowing that this is not where I'm supposed to be and I look back and I know now that that was the goodness of God chasing me and letting me know that he had better plans for me than my plans were for myself and I don't know about you all but I'm thankful I'm thankful that he never stopped that his love never fell short for me. Before I spoke a word, he was singing over me. So good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
thank you that you have given us access to your name Lord that we have been given the authority to use your name God and Jesus we thank you for all that you've done we thank you that we know that you sit at the right hand of the Father God and you make intercession for us for things that we don't even know that we have need of. And we praise you that all we have to do is just say your name. All we have to do is proclaim your name. And we can know that mountains will be moved. 
and we can know that sickness will be healed and we can know that every problem that we face that every thing that gets in our path God that you are right there right in the middle of it that we're never on our own unless we choose to walk away from you but then even then you come running after us God Lord we want to thank you for your presence in this place tonight God we don't deserve it we don't deserve it at all Lord but we thank you for the honor of being with you we ask you Lord to calm troubles calm the things that are going on around us calm those things so that we can focus on you we can focus on the word that you have for us for tonight God that every distraction would be cast out of this place that you would be able to do a mighty work through Brother Stacy, that you would be able to do things through him, God, that he never thought possible. And that you would be able to do a work in us, Lord, that we never thought possible. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you that it's by the power of your name that we are able to do mighty things, God, for your kingdom. And we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a great old big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. I could leave here right now and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. I felt the power of God moving tonight, moving through these altars, people being changed, lives being changed. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for you being here tonight on a Sunday night. I know Sunday nights are not popular with the nowaday Christians, but I thank you for being in the house of the Lord tonight. I know that the Lord has something for us. Amen. This morning, I had, uh, the Lord had dealt with me back earlier in the week and had given me a message on uh, that I was going to preach, and, and that was my full intention to preach that. And then during uh, praise and worship, Joy said something, and the power of God just run through me like lightning and said, upsetting the snake. And, and boy, that just spoke to me, uh, and I, I'm thankful. I think the Lord has sent a word for us. If you got your Bible, turn to Genesis. That's right in the very front of your Bible, if you forgot. Genesis, the very first one, Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read the Scripture here, and then we'll get on with the message. And I believe that the Lord has something for us tonight. Genesis chapter 3, we're going to read verse 13 and 14. Genesis 3, 13 and 14. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all of the days of thy life. I'm going to read that last one again. Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. If you would, just pray with us. Lord God, we thank you for another night that we could just come into your house. And I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to take this word and send it forth, Lord God, to your people. I'm asking you to send it through the airwaves of Facebook tonight. God, I'm asking you to let it go into people's homes, God. People sitting in their vehicle and parking lots, scrolling through Facebook and see that God is moving here at Rio East Church. I'm asking you to let the word go forth and accomplish that which you have sent it, Lord. We would bind any hindering spirits that would come against the word 
of God and loose the power of the Holy Ghost to move here tonight. I'm asking you, Lord God, to loose my lips, God, when they need to be loosed and let me speak boldly the proud word of God that would change people from the inside out. God, help me to proclaim the good news of the gospel, Lord God. And Lord, we'll be sure to give you the honor, glory, and praise for everything you do. And the church said, Amen. I want to talk to you tonight about upsetting the snake. Upsetting the snake. Here, uh, uh, the Sunday before last, uh, in the Sam's Club, I was going to teach the Sam's Club Sunday School. And uh, how many know confession is good for the soul? And as I was up there, I told the members in Sam's Club, I said, you know, this week, back earlier in the week, I thought about contacting Pastor Dale. And me and him, it's a shame we don't ever get to talk. I just preach to him through my message, and he'll get caught up. But anyway, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, I know that y'all are just super spiritual and everything just goes good for you and you just read a little, pray a little. I mean, it's just a bed of roses. But it ain't like that with me. It seems like it's a battle all the time. I mean, it's fighting one devil, get him killed, here comes ten more. It's always like that, just one right after another. And I was, you know, getting down in the mully grubs and I thought about calling Pastor Dale and I was going to say these words. I'm going to say, you know, Pastor, I love you and I love the church, but as for this preaching and this teaching business, I believe I'm going to let somebody else have it. I mean, everybody wants this job till you get it. Everybody, I mean, you wouldn't believe the people that would just give ten bucks to stand right here behind this thing. I'm like, get your cash out. I'll sit down any time. But I thought about that, and I was going to tell Pastor that, you know, I know that during this corona thing and I know that I just speak bold and it don't bother me too much and and you know I'll say things that pastor would like to say but he can't because y'all will be calling him in the morning and you know his office is a little more distinctive than mine but me being the CEO of Web Farm you know if you have any questions you call my human resource department in the morning and I will get back to you But I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know, I know that there's been uh, members left the church over some of the things that I've said, and I hate that. And I know that there have been people that, you know, just absolutely hate it because I kind of have to call out sin that comes with my job. And, you know, anybody could get up here, you know, like Brent's got it made. The only people that gets mad at Brent when he gets up here is those that don't pay tithes. Everybody else is like, oh, preach it, brother. I'm going to be blessed. And then those that are not are like, I can't believe they're up there begging for money again. So it's one or the other. And like I said, I was feeling really down because, you know, I get these reports. Y'all think that y'all can do something in the church, and I won't find out about it, but I will. You know, it just takes me about eight seconds, you know, maybe ten at the most, but I'll find out. And I kind of feel bad when stuff like that happens. And, you know, I, I really thought about that. I was going to tell Pastor, like, look, this job don't pay that good. And, you know, really, I can do without all this headache. I mean, things are going good in my life. My wife's saved. My kids are saved. I'm saved. And, I mean, we're ready to go to heaven, and things are going great for me. But it seems like when you try to impart into others, they get mad. And I thought about calling him and telling him that. And then all at once there was something on the inside of me that rose up. You ever have that little feeling that starts quivering on the inside? I mean, you know, I call it that warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, like when you're standing and looking at somebody smiling, you're thinking, I'm fixing to just bust you right in the mouth. I mean, everything looks good on the outside. And I was thinking about that and the power of God with the swelling up in me. And I thought, no, I believe I'll just stay here and kick a few devils while I'm at it. Jeremiah said, it's just like a fire that's shut up in my bones. I'm telling you, this last day, church, you need to get ready. Things ain't going to go to suit you all the time. It might not be the way you like it, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to stand up against the enemy, and I don't care to kick a snake when he's down. Amen? You know, as I thought about this, upsetting the snakes, I believe it's our job as Christians just to upset the devil. I mean, I really don't care if he don't like me. I got news for you. Some of y'all have been getting along with him for years, and you think he loves you, but he'll snuff you out in a second. His job is to steal, kill, and to destroy, and he is very good at it. 
But tonight I want to talk to you about upsetting the snakes. And you know, one of the things, when I, as I was thinking over there this morning, I was writing them a little tithe envelope. I was writing as fast as the Lord could give it to me. But we need to listen for the snake and know his voice. Oh, everybody will clap their hands and shout unto God and say, Oh, you know, who art thou, Lord? He said, Thou art Peter. You know, I mean, we could go on and quote these scriptures and everything, and we know all the good stuff. But, you know, we said, he, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they shall not follow. Oh, I know the voice of God. Well, that's good. That's great. We should. But I'd like to preach to you tonight. You need to know the voice of the enemy. That might help you all out a lot if you realize when the enemy that would try to bring division, try to bring strife, try to break down the marriage or the home or the family, try to break down the church, you ought to realize that it's the enemy. You know, I don't have to tell you that we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, and wickedness in high places. I mean, it would be a lot more simple if we just war against flesh and blood. I mean, just snuff out the problem, no more problem. Next. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. But we need to listen for his voice. It's been several years ago. I came home from work one day uh, when we were living, still living where Nikki lives now, and I have the same routine. I'm like, if I was a buck deer, I would be the easiest one in the world to kill. I mean, my days are on the minutes. I mean... At 6 o'clock, I'm here. At 7 up, I mean, I'm planned out. And it's real easy. You know, if a thief would watch me, he'd know what time I'd leave and what time I'd come back and all the above. But, see, I come home, and every day I would, I would go and feed my dogs. That's how I did right there. And they know my truck. I mean, they could hear me a half a mile turning in. And they're all out barking. And they're all out ready for old dad to come and give them some feed that day. And I pulled up, and I was just fixing to get out of my truck, and I heard this funny racket. And it sounded like that air was going out of my tire. I'm like, oh, man, all I need is a flat today. Here it is, 95 degrees, and I'm having a flat. And all these dogs are barking every bird. And as I got out of my truck, they just kept barking, and they went and hushing. I'm like, something's up here. And I got to looking at them. And all of them that was barking was looking in the same spot. And they was all barking. And I got to looking, and there was a big old rattlesnake coiled up there. And they was all barking at him. But I had heard that every day for years, that racket that overcome. I'd hear them dogs barking, and I wouldn't pay much attention to it. You know, that's kind of how we are in the church. You know, we come in here, and, and we hear pastor talk about one of these days the trump of God's going to sound, and, and the dead in Christ are going to rise, and we go on about our life. But what's going to happen that day when that trump sounds? It's going to. As I got out and saw that thing, now I know that all you good Christian people would have started speaking in tongues and I mean just praying against that thing but I've done the most logical thing you could do I went and got a shovel and I cut his head off I just chopped his head off and you know it's going out on Facebook live and all this you know for all you animal rights activists I hope that I'm the man that gets to kill the last pregnant female snake on the earth I will do it that's the only thing I think God just messed up on. I mean, he done good on everything, but creating snakes, I just have to question that. But I killed that thing. But the point of the whole thing was this. That racket was there, and I didn't recognize it. If I had been somewhere else, I would have recognized that racket. If I had been out deer hunting Jimmy and I heard that, I'd have said, rattlesnake, right off the bat. But I didn't think of it because it was at the house. And so many times, we'll sit in the house of God, and we'll get our feelings hurt, and we'll get mad at the world and everybody else, and it happens because we don't expect that to happen because we're in the house of God. But I come tonight to tell you, listen, there's coming a shaking right now. Pastor prophesied this early in the year, said, I don't know what it means. I don't know what's going to happen, but I believe there's going to be a shaking. I come tonight to tell you that we're living right now dead set in the middle of the shaking. The church is being shook it's going to be there's going to be wheat and shaft I'm telling you right now we're in the midst of the biggest shaking that the church has ever seen 
We've got to realize the voice of the enemy. If it's God, he'll get a hold of you. How many of you have ever sat in here and be like, you know, God speak to me and like, go pray for whatever. Go pray for Derek. I'm like, oh, no, Lord, not me. I mean, he don't need prayer. He, he looks good. I don't think he's been to China. He don't have the flu. He, he's good shape. Go pray for Derek. And I don't. And all at once, old Keith just gets up and saunters over there, prays for Derek. And I'm like, huh. Missed that one. You know. See, God will take care of it. But when the enemy's speaking, we're like all ears. Y'all, y'all wonder why I do that back in the coffee shop because I can't hear when more than four people's talking. That's the reason that I had to preach because I'm the only one talking right now. I can hear good. But when y'all get to rattling, I can't hear nothing. I'm like, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. You're a sorry dog. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Everything's good. So if I give you the wrong, complete answer, I probably didn't hear you good. But we've got to hear the voice of the enemy and understand that. We've got to understand, listen, we're not fighting flesh and blood. We know that. But it's the principalities, and it's those rulers and wickedness in high place. That's what we're coming against. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians eleven three 3 says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through this his civility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know, the enemy worked through Eve just because he eased into it. You know, so many times as Christians, we expect the devil just to have horns on and, you know, look like the devil. A lot of times he looks like your Sunday school teacher. A lot of times he looks like your pastor or your preacher. And a lot of times he looks different. But, you know, you ever read the scripture where he is as a sheep in wolf's clothing? You know, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He, that, that's what we got to think about sometimes. They don't just meet the part sometimes. You know what I mean? And when we understand that, it, that's what Paul was saying to the Corinthian church. He said, your minds not be corrupted from the simple. This is a simple thing. I'm telling you, we need to disrupt the enemy and keep him on guard. You know, it kind of, you know, offense is better than defense. You know, I'm, I'm not much of a sports fanatic, but I know in football, if you're, you know, if you're on offense, chances are you have a better chance of scoring than you do on defense. Chances are. Unless you're playing UT and then it's just up in the air. I mean, it could go either way. 1 Corinthians 10, 21 says this. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker of the Lord's table and the table of devils. You can't do both. I don't care what they tell you at the church down the road. I'll stand up here tonight and tell you, you can't do both. You can't party with the devil and go meet Jesus. That's amazing to me. And it's become a lifestyle that this last day church has had it. They've been lulled to sleep so many times that you can live like hell and just go meet Jesus. Well, brother, it don't work that way. Sister, not going to happen because I'd hate to think that we would stand before a holy, just God with sin in our life, unforgiven and uncovered. And did he just say, welcome in the glory? I don't think it'll happen that way. I believe the word says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. That's strong words there. That's in your Bible. And what's happened is we've been lulled to sleep by the church because, you know, we just want everybody here. Listen, I'm not concerned about everybody being here, but I'm very concerned about the ones being here making it to heaven. You know, Jesus, as powerful as he was, the son of the living God, handpicked 12 disciples and one of them was the devil I'm not a mathematician but I could figure out that's pretty rough odds on me if he picked 12 and one was the devil how many would we have in here tonight pastor he's calling me a devil I'll never show up on Sunday night again the first and the third good when there's not enough here I won't have to come and preach Believe me, we've all laughed, and it's working that way. Churches don't like this, and they don't like this last. Listen, this has interrupted a lot of lake time right here, a lot of trout fishing and kite flying and volleyball playing, whatever we do. I had a good friend one time. He, 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 he was showing this other boy his turkey hunting vest, and he's like, my Lord, that, thing, that thing's heavy. He said, how do you carry that? He said, oh, for people like you, there's all kinds of sports like badminton. 
I'm like, I hadn't heard that in 30 years. I mean, who still plays badminton? But see, what I'm talking about here is we got to recognize the voice of the enemy. Ephesians 4, 27 says, never, not even, never, neither give place to the devil. I mean, not even a little bit. If you give him a half inch, he'll take four miles. I mean, if we just give the enemy just a little bit, and we, you know, we back up just a little bit, you know, I've thought about this as I, I watch all this stuff that's happening on the news and everything, and, and I got accused of being very political when I preach, so I am, and I'll just go through with that. That way y'all know it. <coughs> I don't want to be fake or anything. I sure don't want to be up here being something that I'm not, but I just believe in praying and, you know, voting for the Bible. If it lines up, it lines up. If it don't, it don't, one or the other. But anyhow, what I was talking about, don't give place to the devil. I mean, not even just a little bit in the house of God or anywhere else you would be, in your business, your finances, whatever, don't give no place to the devil. When you give him a little, he's going to take a whole lot. And it don't work out too good for you in the end. And when we, don't, you don't have to be like the world to win the world. That's a big miscommunication in the church. You don't have to act like the world to win the world. You're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be a city set on a hill that the world wants to be like you. Not that, you know, well, I mean, yeah, if I go to church, I can't, you know, I can't run around on my husband and I can't go get drunk on Friday nights. I mean, there's all kinds of things I can't do if I'm serving the devil. You're right. There is. And we need to recognize that. But the Bible says that he called you, come out from among the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Don't, don't even touch the unclean thing. I mean, get as far from it as you can get. Avoid even the very appearance. If it even looks like sin, stay as far away from it as you can get. Amen? The second point that the Lord gave me tonight, in a cool environment, snakes will stay quiet. In a cool environment, snakes will stay quiet. If I live to be 100 years old and the Lord don't come back, I'll always remember this night. I don't remember exactly the, the year. It would have had to have been probably mid-80s. It was the 18th of October. The reason I remember that, that's my birthday. If y'all want to get me anything for my birthday, it's the 18th of October. I'll be coming up here before long, and there'll be another next year. But anyway, the 18th of October, and y'all know that generally around here we've had frost by then. And I can always remember it was the 18th of October, me and two more men was going around this trail around the mountain hunting. And I was in front, and all at once my light shined down, and there laid the biggest old rattlesnake you ever seen. And I jumped back, I'm like, man, there's a big rattlesnake. And that thing was just laying there. And you know it was so cold that night that I could just take my foot and just hit him a little, and he'd go, he just barely could move because it was so cold. <laughs> well, I see a lot of y'all. Y'all are getting it way before I ever get there. But that thing was so cold that he just laid there. I could have brushed his two teeth. He wasn't doing anything. He laid stretched out. He wasn't going to move. You know why? It was too cold. That's how the enemy is in church. It gets so cold in here. Listen, I felt the breeze come through a time or two, and I kind of sold up myself. But I'm telling you, it gets so cold in here. The devil, he just quieting down. He ain't worried about nothing like that. When he gets under an environment like that, he'll just sit still. Listen, there ain't no needing him striking anybody. They're not doing nothing no way. A cool environment will low. I mean, they won't do nothing. I heard. Listen. I know y'all don't believe it, but I read a lot. I mean, I read stuff. I try to find out because I get questioned by y'all. Y'all ask me questions. There's churches right now, and I don't care to call them out. I'm not going to say the name of it, but y'all can probably figure it out in a little while, especially if you dig like me. There's churches right now that's going along with this crazy mess right in the little city of Townsend that won't even sing in church. You have to make a reservation to go. Lord is my witness. I'm like, man, there have been times when I was a thug, I sure wouldn't have signed up to go. 
me, please take me and drag me to the altar. Let me tell everybody there what kind of sinner I am. I'm sure they had that figured out when they saw you coming in the aisle kicking and screaming. You see what I'm saying? But a cool environment. I mean, Snecker just lay there. He's not got nothing to run from. The Bible says that a sinner can't stand in the congregation of the righteous. It bothers me when, you know, I have people that, that, that leave during service or whatever, and then there'll be some like Macy. She's out tonight, and she's praying for us. I know she's watching on Facebook. But there'll be some because they know that they're going to be convicted. Uh, Derek asked me tonight, said, you going to get on our toes? I said, I probably won't, you know. He said, well, I feel like I need to listen to another preacher if it's not getting on my toes. And I'm just like him because y'all might have arrived, but I've not got there yet. I'm still pressing toward the mark. I'm still hoping for the high calling of God. I'm still trying my best to come up out of this horrible pit that the devil wants me to stay in, and I'm wanting to walk this thing out, and I want, now listen, I don't want to be part of a cool environment. I don't want to be in part of something when the devil thinks that he can be comfortable, just lay there and be lulled to sleep. I want to kick the snake and upset it tonight. I want you to kick the snake. Listen, if the snake has been coming to your family trying to, to destroy him. Don't sit around and cry. Kick him a little bit. Amen. That snake laid there and we all admired him. And we looked him over good. And then I cut me a limb about as big as a hole handle and I busted his head right there in the trail. I mean, he would never. You'd be like, brother, you didn't have to kill him. Yeah, I did and I killed the next one too. <laughs> you can't kill him in the park. Follow me. I heard a park ranger tell this tourist that one time, like, sir, you cannot kill poisonous snakes in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. I'm like, <laughs> okay, we'll ride Tremont tonight after a little rain. They'll be on them black cop roads laid out. We'll go get us a pocket full. But what happens is this. When, you, when they're laid out and it's so cool like that, they don't have no problem. They're good. You think the devil can't sit in a whole lot of church houses? and not be convicted at all, I beg to differ. I've heard a lot of mess, and I'm like, man, I could smoke pot and take pills and listen to this, and it's not bothering me a bit. I'm telling you, we should be convicted. If you're in the house of God, and you're living in open sin, right now there ought to be a conviction over you. You ought to absolutely hate me for delivering the word of God. I mean, you ought to be so mad right now that the devil wants to keep you bound up. But I come with good news tonight that God would set you free. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. A cool environment. They'll stay quiet. Matthew 24 and 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We get so used to it. It's pitiful. We get so used to sin and stuff that used to happen in the church. I mean, if it happened, you know, like Dale's grand, I, I think of his papa all the time, Fred McKenna. If he was to come into the churches nowadays, he'd be amazed. He wouldn't understand. He, he would be like, no, this ain't how it used to be. <laughs> and I'm not part of the problem, but I'm trying my best to solve it. I'm part of the problem of allowing the world. Because we say things like, they'll never come. If you preach the word of God, they'll never come. I thought that before. And then I read in this book, it's Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. It ain't about a hamburger drawing them in or a hot dog or free meal. We can have a free breakfast back in Sam's Club. That'd be 70 people show up. I'm like, my God, you don't sell your soul for a piece of sausage. I'm like, if I wanted it that bad, I would stop at Bojangles and get a hot one. I stood in line. Y'all don't never know who's in line behind you. I stood in line behind a prominent preacher at the co-op. I was about four people deep. And them ladies, I deal with them every week. I know them all. 
and he was giving them a hard time and he was talking out of turn. And when I got up there, they was already mad. And I kind of calmed the situation. Well, the next day and the next time that I went in, I stopped and got 10. You can get 10 Bojangle sausage biscuits for like 11 bucks. I'm like, this 11 bucks will earn me some brownie points with the girls at co-op. <laughs> but the point is, if you're supposed to be a highly preserved man of God, you ought to act like it down at the co-op. Or wherever else you're at. Amen? Think about that. In a cool environment, they'll stay quiet. Revelations 3, 15 and 16 says this. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I work that cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So you'd be better off as a good church member at Rio East to either be on fire or out of the fire one or the other lukewarm's not going to get it lukewarm is not going to get it y'all can sit here you know till Jesus comes back but you need to know on the inside of you when pastor said that this morning I thought well that's deep right there once that the enemy knows that death can't scare you I mean, where's the bargaining tool at now, dude? I'll take your life. <laughs> no, you won't. You didn't take Job's. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> he, you remember old Job sitting there in a pile of ashes scraping his bulls? That's worse than Corona. I mean, he's sitting there, and his old crazy wife said, Won't you just curse God and die? He said, You speak as a foolish man. God gives and God takes away. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And when that's happening in your life, listen, don't be lukewarm. Be on fire for God. It don't matter what the world's doing. We're supposed to be different than the world. And when that happens and it gets people torn up, I want people to see what the enemy is trying to do. This ain't about a virus. It's not about a... a a black person being killed by poli. This is about the devil trying to destroy the world. And people's like, well, I don't see it that way. Listen, it's what it's about. I know people right now that's got the coronavirus. You wouldn't know it. No. They're not going up at the hospital either because if three months later they had a heart attack, that would chunk up in the record books as a corona death. Preach on, Brother Stacy. That's good. I'll do the preaching and the amen because I know it's right. That's what happens. And it, it tears the church up. And it, it's a man. I'm mad at the devil. I want to kick him right now. I mean, boy, if he's flesh and blood, I'd tear into him. I mean, right now. Because he tries to destroy people and it's working sometimes. And, you know, I'm good with that with the world. The Bible says, you know, the way of a transgressor is hard. I mean, they ought to have hard times. If you're separated from God and you're living for the devil, it ought to be crashing down on you. Amen? That's right. <laughs> Boy, but the way of a transgressor is hard. And I don't want to be that. And I don't want to see it in the church. And I don't want to see people that get so tore up over stuff. As Pastor said, the worst thing can happen to you is go meet Jesus. Boo! That's a bad thing. You know, I mean, just... Dying, go meet Jesus. It, I mean, it's just so bad. That's the worst case scenario. I just don't get it. I mean, you know, like, well, you want to die, bro? Listen, what, my days are numbered. I'm in the palm of his hand. From the day that I, before he ever formed me in my mother's womb, he knew me. And I know that one of the, listen, y'all don't know it, but they don't teach this too often, but you ain't getting out of this world alive. Unless the rapture of the church happens, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. So if I die of corona, I won't die of heart disease. So if I die of leukemia, I won't die of something else. But you're going to die. The main thing is to be ready to die. I mean, 
where's the bargaining power of the enemy? When you're ready to meet Jesus, it's all good. But on the other hand, if you're not ready to meet Jesus, it can be all bad. Because he's going to come as a thief in the night. That's how, that's what's going to happen. And one of these days when we're all doing whatever we do, and the trump of God sounds, and there's going to be some Christians like, what's that racket? And they're going to look over there, there's a pair of overalls, muck boots, and a brown t-shirt. <laughs> Right down in the middle of co-op. <laughs> and I'm going to be out of here. Y'all, it's left. You can have my billfold. Man, it's give me $6. You can have it too. <laughs> I hope she's going to heaven with me. But I'm telling you, I'm out here on the first run. Not going to wait around. I'm not. Listen, if you wait around, you'll get to listen to this little tape right here. Pastor May, I call it tape. Actually, it's a CD. That just tells my age. You know, everything's tapes. Me, kind of like Coke or what? Y'all drinking pop and Pepsi? I drink Coke, Flatline. Anyway, Amen. We're getting some truth in the house now. <laughs> Listen, the last part tonight. I'm going to preach to you. With <laughs> y'all, get a laugh out of this. I heard Pastor Teresa and Nanette talking about it earlier. They didn't know what's in my message. That's just between me. And the computer and Nikki. Nikki done the computer part. <laughs> I didn't get involved in that. But the last point tonight is to stop praying and start killing. Stop praying and start killing. You know, we teach that, and I believe it with all it's in me. We need to be a praying church. We need to pray. We need to pray for, you know, we need to pray for the church. We need to pray for pastor. We need to pray for our Sunday school teacher. We sure need to pray for the praise team. We need to pray for this you. I can give you a list of everything we need to pray for. No problem. We need to pray. But there comes a point in time that you have to quit praying and start killing. Back years ago, I got a phone call at work. That was way before cell phones, even the flip style. I mean, that was back before the you carried it in a bag kind. I get a phone call, it was an outside ring, and I go to the phone, and it's Nanette on the phone. She's like, hurry, you've got to come home. What's going on? You won't believe it. I've been praying. I mean, I've been speaking death, life. I've been, I've been binding. I've been loosing. I've been doing all this. I'm like, what's going on? There's like three or four snakes in our bathtub. Really? Yeah. You've got to come home now. I said, look, I can't come home. The first thing you got to do is just quit praying. I mean, you know, stand there. You can pray all you want to. You still got snakes in your bathtub. <laughs> Unless you get a miracle from God and they're disintegrated all at once, you still, when you say amen, there are going to be snakes in your bathtub. I'm like, go outside and go get you a hoe and go in there and kill them things. But you could have prayed all day long. How's that working out for you? I mean, you can speak in tongues. You can speak any way you want to. They're still there. Unless God just, poof, and they're gone. But she, she went and got her a hoe, and she said she throwed a bath towel over them, and it looked like a Friday the 13th movie when she left. <laughs> she left the bathroom. There was blood everywhere. I'm like, good. We've, I'm telling you, me and her's got miles and miles and miles out of this one. I mean, this has been preached from here all the way to Georgia and back. But there's a time that you have to quit praying and start killing. I mean, stand up. There's a time that you need to say, listen, when you know that the enemy is trying to destroy your family, you need to get bold as a lion and say, devil, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm going to stand flat-footed right here, and I proclaim the word of God, and I'm believing that God is going to take care of this situation. Satan, you don't have authority over what's going on no more. We've got to believe that way. We've got to listen. Don't let the snake lay there. That's what they take. Don't kill them snakes. I'm like, if I walk by a snake up on Abrams Creek, a big rattler laying there, and I walk by that thing and say, oh, he's so precious, let him go. Let him go. God created him. He's a precious animal. And tonight I'm watching WATE News, and it says a young three-year-old boy was bitten by a rattlesnake today on Abrams Creek, and he died of complications. I've been like, man. I should have killed that thing. You see what I'm saying? You can pray all you want to, but the Bible says that faith without works is dead. You can go crawl in your hole and pray till Jesus comes back, 
And let me know how that works out for you. Because the Bible says that just show me what's going to happen with just your faith, and I'll show you what will happen with some faith and works. I'll show you what will happen when we put feet to it. We can talk about it all day long, but when we start doing it, amen, when we start doing it, that's where the difference will be. Stop praying and start killing. First Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We're seeing that right now, right where we're living. They'll be in the last day. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. We're seeing that, matter of fact, probably on a weekly basis, if not a daily. We're seeing those depart from the faith. <laughs> some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. There's spirits, you know, that, that, that would make you feel bad if you was born a white person. That's a spirit, you know. You would create, you, it's all right to say amen. Don't say nothing. I'll just tell you again. There's a spirit out there that would make you feel bad if you was born a white person. And that's a spirit. We were all created in the image of God. Don't care what color you are. It don't have nothing to do with color. You were created. I can't change that. Matter of fact, your Bible says, and mine too, and I read it last night. Can an Ethiopian change his color? Can a leopard change his spots? Nope, because he was born that way. And that's what I'm saying. But there's going to be people that would depart from the faith and have its seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. A lot of you all, listen, I know, and it's fine and dandy. And like I said before, I'll stand on the Word of God. I can debate anybody if we use this as the groundwork. But if you don't, if you don't believe this, I can't even talk to you. If you can look me in the eye and say, I believe the Bible, then I can debate any subject with you using this as the groundwork but now if we're just using your opinion opinions are like rear ends everybody's got one unless your opinion is based on this book it's not going to stand I don't it don't, don't have nothing to do with your color your creed your rate ain't nothing like that but if it's based on this book this book's going to stand and I know that in these last days, these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and a lot of you all have fallen into it, and a whole lot of them on Facebook has. This Black Lives Matter stuff. Listen, all lives matter, black, yellow, white, red. I don't care what color it is. Black Lives Matter is now becoming a political organization. And whether you like it or whether you don't, that's exactly what it is. And they're going from town to town, and it's liable to show up here in good old Maryville at any time. And they're using a bad thing that happened to loot, to destroy, to tear up. But here, we're seeing this. Listen, y'all pay attention. We're seeing this right now. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. A seducing spirit is the one that gets a hold of you and makes you think that the devil is right. That's a seducing spirit. Woo! I feel it. I'll stand. Listen, like I said before, y'all contact my human resource office tomorrow. Derek Bryant, he works for the city of Alcoa. He's a good employee. But he can't say the things that I can say right here without reaping repercussions. He would reap a repercussion if he said the things that I say. But like I said, you contact my human resource department. We will call you back tomorrow. I can. And like I said before, if it don't line up with this book, it ain't worth throwing in the fire. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. And I want people to realize, and I want people in this congregation to be equipped because in the last days, they're going to be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. When I watch videos of Caucasian women kissing shoes of black men and them saying in the background, this is the new one. Jesus is gone. This is the new way. Oh, I can show it to you. 
Y'all thinking it ain't real. I can show it to you. I'm talking right now. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And a lot of the church is not aware that it's going on. Not under my watch. Y'all might not sit here every time. But if you sit here, I promise you, you'll hear the truth. The truth's what's going to make you free. I mean, your opinion won't do much for you, but the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I've given to you all power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. You say, well, I was all good with this till Ronnie Hepperly got the coronavirus. I'm still good with it. I told my wife sitting across from my table this week, I think the world, Ronnie Hepperly, he's the first man to ever let me preach. I mean, back when Rio was nothing, before Rio was even formed. Foothills Church of God, and the only reason I got to preach there, there wasn't 20 people in there. He's one of my mentors in the faith. My school bus driver when I was in school. I told my wife this week, if Ronnie Hepperly died of the coronavirus, it wouldn't change my stance on it one bit. Not one bit. And I'm not saying anything bad about him, but I'm bragging on my God because my days are numbered and I'm in the palm of his hand. And he would tell you the same thing. I know people, like I said right now, that's got this stuff that's been setting up for a week or two at a time. I mean, man, I might have had it. I've been sneezing and sniffling and that trip to China just about broke me in. Y'all will get that tomorrow? <laughs> no, I believe my problem's called mimosa bushes. You know them great old big pink ones about that big? They're cursed from hell. I mean, but I'm keeping Afrin in business. I'm, I'm hurrying. We're meddling now. <laughs> 1 John 3 and 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. Ooh, oh, I better read that again. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, oh, I like this part. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might comfort the works of the devil. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Y'all still comforting them snakes. I mean, destroy them. Them little snakes that get in your life. You know, the Bible says it's them little foxes that's full of mine. I mean, your life can just get turned upside down because of, you know, just the devil got in your good seat and just drug you into hell. It didn't work that way. It's them little foxes that spoil the vine. And when you read something like that, but the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. I mean, bring to light, destroy, annihilate. Just like I was talking about chopping them rattlesnake heads off. I mean, don't pet them. Kill them. And then these last days, you know, do more killing than praying. And I know that some of y'all's jacked up about that, but you'll get over it. I mean, there's a time. That's all I've heard my whole life. Oh, we just got to pray for them, brother. Yeah, pray, let's pray for them, and then let's just call it out. <laughs> that way they'll know it. <laughs> Listen, I know that prayer changes everything. I, an old friend of mine who's dead now, he used to make that statement. He'd stand up and he'd say, turn your red back hymnals to page 57. Let's all sing Amazing Grace. God is good. Prayer changes things. And he's right. That's right. Prayer changes things. But after a while, we got to walk this thing out. We have to do something. Faith without works is dead. The last scripture tonight, Joy, if you all want to come up, please, for a song. Revelation 20 and 2 says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Do you know right now that there is an angel in heaven polishing a chain? He is fixing to lock him up. <laughs> you remember that back during the election? Everybody's chanting, lock her up, lock her up. <laughs> I thought of that scripture when I read that. <laughs> There's... There's an angel in heaven polishing a chain right now. And he's getting ready to lock him up. I'm telling you that a Satan, Satan, that old serpent, 
He's going to be locked up and bound for a thousand years. You talk about freedom. Y'all ain't never seen freedom. I mean, I, R.C. will run his shoe soles off. Ron Brewster, he'd be making laps. I mean, two-mile laps, 80 mile an hour. When that old Satan, that old serpent is, is locked up and we can have freedom and we don't have to worry about sin, I'm telling you, that's the time, That's what I'm waiting on. Y'all just waiting on to hear the trump of God, and I'm all good with that, and I am too. But I'm ready for that old devil to be locked up where he won't be destroying people's lives. There's nothing good that comes out of it. There's nothing good. Sin, there's nothing good with sin. Sin is just serving inappropriate needs. It's fun for a season. I mean, you know, it's real fun for a season. But after a while, that runs out. After a while, it runs out. It's not fun anymore. If y'all feel like it, stand with us all over the house. I believe that the Lord has dealt with people here tonight. And all funniness aside, serious as I can say it, there's people in here I feel like that would have unforgiven sin in your life. And you would say, well, are, are you my judge? No, not, not in the least. Man, of all people, not me. But I'm under a mandate of God give you an opportunity. There's, like I said before, there's nothing free like the free freedom that you get from Jesus Christ. If you've been bound with sin, there's sin in your life, and you don't know how to get it out. You don't know what to do. I mean, you're a good person, and you love, you know, you want to come to church, and you love Pastor Teresa and Pastor Dale, and you know, there's good people here, but you just got to hang up in your life, and sure don't want everybody knowing about it. You know, I don't need to know your business. I don't get paid for this job. And I don't want to. But what I'm saying is this. If there's unforgiven sin in your life, I still believe in the old way. The Bible says, search you out the old paths and walk you therein. Paths of holiness and righteousness without which. Listen, you got to walk in them old paths. Them old paths. When the enemy's been trying to destroy you from the inside out, them little foxes have been trying to destroy you. You have an opportunity tonight like none other. You have an opportunity to get your life straightened out with the Lord. I mean, that's something that I can't do that for you. Pastor can't do that for you. That's between you and the Lord. But it takes repentance. And it takes, you know, being serious and praying to God and asking God to forgive you you of all unrighteousness because one of these days the trump of God is going to sound and for like I said those of us who are trying alive and remaining already we're leaving for those that have unforgiven sin in their life these words depart from me you workers of iniquity where I never did you have an opportunity tonight like no other to confess your faults Oh, you don't have to sit inside behind the screen and tell a preacher. You don't have to tell nobody. You need to tell Jesus. And you need to come out from among the world and be you separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And, and Paul said in the book of Acts, this thing wasn't done in a corner. This thing ain't going to be done in a corner. I can ask you tonight, everybody bow your head. All y'all have got sin in your life, raise your hand. It'd be eight or ten. This thing wasn't done in the corner. The Bible says, come out from among the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord. There's a time that you've got to come out from among the world and be separate and bring all your troubles to the Lord. Listen, lay your burdens on him for his burdens. I mean, he'll take care of it. Now, I don't care what you're in. I don't care if you've got ten pounds of pot hit out in your basement right now. God will take care of it. I don't care if you're having an affair against your husband with another man, a woman or man, whatever. God can take care of you. I don't care if you're addicted to heroin right now or you've got morphine in your pocketbook. It don't matter to me. 